Payments added to capital account. Payments earmarked for a capital asset or improvement or other, otherwise charged to the corporation's capital account are added to the basis of your stock in the corporation. For example, you can't deduct a payment used to pave a community parking lot, install a new roof, or pay the principal of the corporation's mortgage. Treat as a capital cost the amount you were assessed for capital items. This can't be more than the amount by which your payments to the corporate, uh, corporation exceeded your share of the corporation's mortgage interest and real estate taxes. So you can see where kind of the complexity comes into play because now you have to parse out the the depreciation. You have to kind of figure what that's going to be. And then if there's improvements, if you're paying for improvements in the building, those again would usually be capitalized items that you would you would need to depreciate instead of expensing at the point in time that they happen. So your share of interest and in taxes in the uh, your share of interest and in taxes is the amount the corporation elected to allocate to you if it be reasonable if it be reasonably reflects those expenses for your apartment. Otherwise, figure your share in the following manner. So now you've got the uh, interest and in taxes that the corporative itself might do a reasonable allocation to try to allocate the interest and in taxes because now the corporation itself as the corporative like as a separate legal entity is going to be dealing with paying the interest and taxes for everything right and you get but you should be able to be deducting the part of the interest that's applicable to you and the taxes if you're renting your place in the corporative so now the question is well how do you figure out your portion well maybe the corporative itself will do that with some reasonable method if they do not then you got to calculate that one divide the number of of your shares of stock by the total number of shares outstanding that gives us your percent interest in essence including any shares held by the corporation Two, multiply the corporation's deductible interest by the number you figured in one this is your share of the interest so fairly straightforward calculation not too bad three multiply the corporation's deductible taxes by the number you figured in one this is your share of taxes all right next situation we've got property that's changed to rental use so possibly it was personal in use and then we changed it to rental use so the so the issue there often becomes around the basis or the cost of the property because you bought it some time ago when you bought it you bought it at fair market value but now when you when you uh, changed it to rental use then the fair market value could have changed for example and you got to deal with that depreciation situation again so if you change your home or other property or part of it to rental use at any time other than the beginning of uh, your tax year you must divide yearly expenses such as taxes and insurance between rental use and personal use so now you've got this mid-year kind of problem because you changed from from personal to rental in the middle uh, of the year so you can deduct as uh, rental expenses only the part of the expenses that is for the part of the year the property was used or held for rental purposes you can't deduct appreciation or insurance for the part of the year the property was held for personal use however you can include the home mortgage interest and real estate uh, tax expenses for the part of the year the property was held for personal use when figuring the amount you can deduct on schedule a example so your tax year is the calendar year. You moved from your home in May and started renting it out on uh, June 1st. You can deduct as rental expenses 7 12th of your yearly expenses, such as taxes and insurance, which makes sense because that's 7 12th is the ratio of seven over 12 months, right? The year that you uh, rented it. Starting with June, you can deduct as rental expenses the amounts you pay for items generally billed monthly, such as utilities. When figuring depreciation, treat the property as placed in service on June 1st. So now we, that's when that would be like if we bought the property and placed it in service or something like that. Similar situation because that's when we uh, put it into the rental side of things from personal side of things. Now we have the basis issue. So it's, so it's like, okay, so now I know when to put it on the books. What am I going to put it on the books for? Because I didn't just buy it. Basis of property changed to rental use. 
When you change your property, uh, you held for personal use to rental use, for example, you rent your former home, the basis for the depreciation will be the lesser of the fair market value or adjusted basis on the date of conversion. Now this makes sense if you think about it because let's say you bought the property a long time ago for $100,000 and now it's going up to $150,000 and you're converting it from personal property to rental property. If you were able to just put it on the books at 150,000, the higher fair market value, you would have gotten what we call a step up in basis, which is a good thing. Usually you would like to be able to do that, but notice what happens now is, is you didn't realize the gain of the 50,000. So usually if you, if you sold the home for 150,000, and you cost a hundred thousand, you'd have a fifty thousand dollar gain. That might be exempted in that case if it was your personal residence, but you have that gain situation, and so you can't just wipe out the gain by saying, "Well, now I'm going to put it on the books at a hundred and fifty thousand and be able to depreciate and get a hundred and fifty thousand worth of depreciation." Or if I sell the rental property, I've got this stepped-up basis. So, so the higher basis is usually good. We want to have a higher basis, and the IRS is. You know going to be skeptical to step up the basis so so that would kind of make sense